Well, Nigel, how on earth did you get involved in a breed that at the time must have been incredibly rare? Well, many years ago now, about 16 years ago, I lost my golden retriever that used to go everywhere with me to work. It was like my, my best friend. And I was never going to have another dog. And then as the months went by, I was starting to miss my dog. But what I didn't want was the hairs what came with the golden retriever, yeah. Bruno. So I started looking for a dog that didn't shed, which led me to the Portuguese water dog and then to the Spanish water dog, which when I read about its characteristics, just ticked every box that I wanted it to. Funnily enough, we got two at first, which was a big mistake. But, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a little self-explanatory, but where's the breed from and what was it utilised for? Well, obviously the breed's from Spain. It's, it's more prominent in the south of Spain, in Andalusia, where it was used like a general farm dog. They would hunt rabbits, they would retrieve game. They, they do herd, but it's yeah. more of a chase, more of a prey drive. Mm. Um, they used it by the fishermen in the ports for recovering fish that have fallen out of the nets and also for taking the ropes off the boats, climbing up the harbour walls, <laughs> giving them to the fishermen's friends to tie the boats up. And then they were used for guarding the fish. Incredible. Um, so a bit of a utility route. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I've seen them in Spain working with builders. They could be calling them to take tools up onto the roofs and they <laughs> used to climb up the ladders onto the roofs. They've just got such a desire to retrieve and in the water, that retrieve changed into a diving, and they dive like a corkscrew. And I've actually, I've actually seen them dive up to six metres deep. Wow. They was actually recognised as an official breed in 1982. So even, not very long ago no, at no, all? No, even though there's a very old breed and used as a working dog. And these magnificent coats, what sort of grooming is required on that? No grooming whatsoever. It's a distinctive woolly coat um, that makes cords or cords sometimes is the wrong word they're, they're, they're fine ringlets and it's a wool coat that grows a centimeter a month and should be clipped off completely at least once a year so if you want a longer coat you can let it grow long and all you do is part the, the cords with your fingers to split them it is harder for them to dive if they have a heavy coat on because it, it acts as a bit of a buoyancy aid so it's water gets underneath and it actually it's waterproof as well so the undercoat shields them from our cold weather so it's like a wetsuit basically the secret with the spanish water dogs is that the spanish feel very strongly about this it's a very rustic working breed mm. and they don't want it altered and shaped by scissoring and stuff like that it has to be shown in a clean state but no aesthetic grooming whatsoever apart from that one clip and is there a particular time that you do that no, traditionally it was done in the springtime in spain but i mean you, you can keep them quite short if you're working um so i, I clip blue twice a year. Paco, if he's got a good coat, would be once a year. Castro, I used to cut once a year. I know my show dogs. And Castro, uh, one Top Gun dog a couple of years ago. Um, but one thing was always clear. Uh, mischief. <laughs> and he was full of fun. That's the breed. That's what the breed is all about. Fun, happiness, not scared of anything, wanting to say hello, coming to see people. Yeah be friendly. They shouldn't be nervous, they shouldn't be scared, they should be happy and confident and bold. A working dog yeah. that is steady and full of confidence. Give us a brief overview. What is it the standard asks for? Basically you're wanting a dog of no bigger than 50 centimetres, a little bit longer than it is high, a nice strong head, a strong muzzle, pigmentation to match the darkest colour of the dog's coat, a lovely straight front, moderately angled, strong top line, short strong loin, well muscled, a tail that's moderately set. Um, the new standard that the Spanish want to do is saying it can be carried like a sabre but not curled over and touching the back if that gets passed by the FCI. And again, moderately angled in the back. Just a strong working dog. What are they like as companions? You've got Paco here retired next to you. Oh, well, Paco, Paco, he doesn't think he's retired really, but it, he has retired now. They're a dog that, if you ask them to do something, will do it and will walk all day long, retrieve all day long. But if they come in the house, they switch off. But more importantly, it's mental stimulation. I mean, we're always working with them, hiding balls. They love praise. They have to know what they've done wrong. They're just such a loyal, devoted breed. Basically, you've got to go and find the breeders, go and visit the dogs, be happy with the parents' characters. You want a KC registered dog, so then your options aren't limited. If you want to go and do fly ball, agility, gun dog work, we just need some knowledgeable gun dog people to come and take them on and show all these cockers and springers just what the Spanish are capable of. <laughs>